Hi everyone, Nathan again. And in this video, we're gonna present our solution to the motorcycle use case presented in the previous video. And let's jump right in, in a summary of the logistics flow that Kieran told us about. As Kieran said, they have two plans, one for the manufacturing and one for the quality control and temporary storing before the bikes get shipped to the customer. They do not keep stock as they use a pull strategy for the logistics, their bikes are therefore make to order. And here is how you should see it. When a customer orders a bike, this demand will request the bike from the quality plant. This will in return trigger a request from the quality plant to the manufacturing plant, which will produce the bike. As we are implementing a pull strategy or make to order strategy, a request comes from downstream and works its way back up the supply chain. The only items that are set as make to stock are the shocks, brakes and raw materials that they buy from the suppliers and those are stored in the manufacturing plant. There is one thing that is important to note, uh, since the bikes leave one plant to go to the next one, we need an intermediary virtual location between the two plants for the units in transit from the first plant to the second one. This will be called a transit location, so the manufacturing and quality uh, warehouses. There will be physical locations, while the transit location is virtual. It's just a mean for our implementation. The demand is propagated from the customer to the manufacturing plant, therefore going through quality plant and transit location. And once the request reaches the manufacturing plant, the production of the bike will start. Parts will be put together to create the bike in a manuf manufacturing plant, and the bike will move to the transit location before reaching the second plant in which quality control will be performed upon receipt. And the bike will be then shipped to the customer from the quality plant. So the key element here is to realize that in order to implement this pull strategy, make to order strategy, we need to work our way up the supply chain by studying downstream where the actual need comes from, in this case, the customer. So first, we need to make sure that warehouses and routes are correctly set up in my inventory app. So go to inventory and under configuration and settings, you need to find the multi warehouses option and the multi step routes option and make sure those two are enabled. Then go to configuration and warehouses. And then, and then you can create your two plans in this case, the manufacturing plan and the quality plan. Now we saw previously that the tricky bit about this implementation is the creation of a transit location and the automatization of the creation of the transfer from the manufacturing plan to this transit location and of the transfer from the transit location to the quality plant. And for that, Odoo actually makes it really simple. By going to the quality plant, the one that needs to resupply from the manufacturing plant, you can use the resupply from option that you can see at the right bottom, right there. And you check the warehouse from which it needs to resupply, in this case, manufacturing. And by saving, Odoo is gonna create two things. First, a virtual location transit, then you can be right there, the one we talked about in our diagram. And it's gonna create the routes that we need for our flow to be complete. So the two picking, the one from the manufacturing, manufacturing plant stock to the transit location and from the transit to the quality plant. And now let's take a look at the product configuration. In our case, we have three different kinds of products. We have the finished one, the motorcycle that will be manufactured. We have the subparts that we manufactured as well and the purchase items, the purchase product that we buy from our suppliers. In this case, raw materials in the form of uh, aluminum plates, shocks and brakes. Now first let's take a look at the motorcycle configuration. Under the inventory tab, you can see that I checked the make to order and manufacture routes to make sure that this product is manufactured only upon request from downstream the supply chain. Now I also have to check the quality resupply route, as you can see right there, the one we created earlier with the resupply option to make sure that when the quality plan needs this item, it's gonna use this route to resupply from the manufacturing plant. My motorcycle is tracked by unique serial number and I also have a bill of material that I set up that you can find right there to tell the system which items I need to create to manufacture in this motorcycle. Now going back to my product catalog, let's take a look at the engine for instance, one of our subparts. As you can see in the inventory tab, I also have the make to order and manufacture routes checked in and I have my bill of material right there. In this case, we simply use, as I said, aluminum plates as raw material for simplicity's sake. Going back to the product catalog one last time, 
I now need to deal with my purchase product. Now, those ones are a bit different since I need to buy them for my supplier. Let's take a look at the break, for instance. You can see in the inventory options that only the buy route is checked in. Since, uh, in this case, I'm make to stock, I'm not make to order, since I want to keep stock of this one. And for each of those three items that we buy from our supplier, we set up reordering rules. In this case, for the breaks, you can find it right there. As you can see, the minimum quantity is 30, meaning that if the stock decreases under 30 and the scheduler is run, then it will trigger a purchase to my vendor. And this vendor, you can find it under the purchase option of my product right there. Now for the three purchase items, we set up the same vendor. And my stock is quite low, so I'm going to go to operations and run the scheduler. And now what happens is that Odoo realized that some of those stocks, in this case, all of three, are way too low. And if I go to the purchase app, you can see that my request for quotation is ready to be validated to resupply my stock. And last but not least, we need to control motorcycles reaching the second plan, the quality plans. Now we go to quality for that, then quality control and control points. There's already two that I set up before this video. And basically what you just need to do is for each of those control points, specify which product will be controlled, in this case the motorcycle, and in which operations, operation it will be controlled. In this case, it will be the quality plan received. And there's a few options that you can deal with as well. For instance, how often the control happens and which type of control it is. Now that we have tackled the configuration of our logistics, we're going to take a look at the rest of our operations and processes, starting with CRM in this case. Duran told us that all the leads are generated from the website. What we did in CRM is first making sure that in the settings the leads are enabled. And we created two sales teams. They told us that sometimes they have a showroom and events in their headquarters. So we created two sales teams, one for the direct sales, let's say representing 90% of their sale orders, and for the rest of the sale orders, for the leads generated from the event, we created an extra sales team. Going to the direct sales team, you can see that we set up an email alias. This means that any, any emails sent to this address will generate a lead directly assigned to this sales team. Now, the idea here is to have this email address present, present on the contact us page, on the website, on the flyers, or in any marketing means to make sure that all the leads are redirected to this sales team. Now, before this video, I sent an email myself to this address, and you can see that in the leads, this created a new record right there. Now, the next logical step would be to convert this lead to an opportunity. In this case, I'm going to create a new customer or link it to my existing customer right there. And I want to create a quotation from this lead. So I go to new quotation. My customer is already set up. But this one, I know this one, and it's a premium customer. And Kira told us that sometimes they want to give discounts to returning customers. And this is why we created as well the premium customer price list. And we're going to take a quick look right there. And you can see that it's only one prices item, one line, saying that on all products, there's a 10% discount if you have this price list enabled. Now that the price list is set up, I can add my product. In this case, they're going to buy one unit of my motorcycle. Now, we need to make sure that this sale order triggers a request from the quality plans. So, in other information, you need to make sure that the warehouse specified on this set order is the quality plant and not the manufacturing one. Because the quality plant is going to request the items from the transit location, which is going to request the items from the manufacturing plant. So if all, the, all those things are set up, we can confirm our set order. And it takes a while because the set order needs to create all the pickings uh, required and all the manufacturing orders as well. And you can see right there that I do not have one delivery, one picking, but three. Why? Because I have one that goes to my customer, one that goes to the quality plant stock, and one that goes to the transit location from the manufacturing plant. Now, now just give me a minute, I'm gonna confirm all of this, along with the manufacturing orders in the manufacturing app right there that have been created to actually manufacture my bike. Now that the manufacturing orders and the generated pickings are confirmed, we can finally deliver the motorcycle to my customer. If you go to the three deliveries generated from the sale order, you can see that the first two are done and the one to my customer is ready to go. 
Now, Kieran made clear that there are some discrepancies sometimes between his accounting department and logistics, meaning that sometimes some invoices are not synced, are not linked to the deliveries, and there's some, some difference. And he wants to avoid that. What we did is on the motorcycle itself, on the product form, we made sure that the invoicing policy of my motorcycle is on delivered quantities, meaning that I can only invoice my product if it has been delivered, not before, right? And this is to make sure that Accounting can only invoice what has been delivered, so it, it needs to follow up with logistics. Now, he also told us that sometimes early, pay, early, early payers get a discount. So what we did is create a payment term that I can already set up on my sale order right there. And this one applies a 2% discount if you pay within the first week. And if not, then we have two months to pay to pay the full, the full balance. Now I can finally, finally deliver my, my motorbike. Right there, I validated the picking first. And going back to the sale order, you can see that now the line is blue, meaning that since I've del delivered my item, I can finally invoice it. You go to, go to create invoice, and you invoice invoiceable lines. And you can see that finally my invoice is ready to be validated. Last but not least, Kieran asked us if there was a way to simplify the way he pays his vendor bills. Right now he needs to process the bills separately and pay them himself but he wanted the file to send to his, to his bank to process the, the payments for them. So here you can see there is the vendor bill from the purchase order we generated earlier in this video. And when registering payments, you can see that there's a new option, the SEPA credit transfer, that needs to be enabled on the bank journal in this case. And when selecting this option, you can see that I'd simply have to choose which is your recipient's bank account. I validate it. And now going to vendor and payments, you can see that my payment is right there. Obviously, those are going to add up. And when there's, a, let's say, 20, you can select them all, go to action, and create a batch payment. Since it's, the payment method is SEPA credit transfer, validating this batch payment will allow him to download the file he can send later to his bank. So here it is. This was our solution to Kieran's manufacturing use case. But how did you solve this use case? Feel free to share your own solution with us and discuss them in the comments and thank you for watching.